Hello everybody and welcome to the webinar series hosted by Markets with India. I'm Hitesh and today I'll be taking you through how to use the 50 and the 200 day moving averages to get your selling right. Before we begin, a disclaimer. Please do not consider any stocks discussed in today's webinar as either a buy or a sell investment advice. This webinar is being hosted purely for an educational purpose. Now just to lay out the agenda for today's webinar, we'll first look at the importance of technical analysis and selling. We'll look at the 50 and the 200 day moving averages and how to get how to use them to get your selling right. And uh, when the 50 and the 200 day moving averages cross over each other, we'll look at how to interpret that action. Technical analysis for selling. You might have observed that in Canslin, when we are making a buy decision, we look at both the fundamentals as well as the technicals. Both come into play when we are making a buy decision. But when it comes to selling, you need to remember here that the principle here is we sell purely based on technicals. The company might be having good fundamental growth. It might be having the required 20-25% uh, quarterly growth, annual growth, a good ROE, etc. But when the technicals are weakening, you've got to be selling the stock. That is the principle here. You can always re-enter the stock when the stock again forms a proper base and breaks out. But when the technicals are weakening, even if the fundamentals are good, you've got to be selling. Very often, technical analysis holds clues much before the fundamentals begin to deteriorate. You might wonder why so. Institutional investors have huge resources and tools to do deep stock research. They have better access to a company's management. The retail investor is at a particular disadvantage here. Therefore, the retail investor is very often the last person to come to know information which is required for a stock. So it makes sense to track what the institutional investors are doing, to track what the smart money is actually doing. So using technical analysis, you can actually see what smart money is doing. Very often, when smart money enters the market, they are bound to leave footprints in the market. So when you use technical analysis, you can do what the smart people are doing. Another very important aspect of rule-based technical analysis, it helps keep your emotional biases under the check. Now, when you are buying into a stock, you do a lot of work. You research really hard and you make a decision, let's say that you, are, you, want, you like a certain stock and you want to buy it. But if the stock price corrects from there, your mind is in a conflict. You like the stock, your mind has agreed that the stock is good and you have purchased the stock, but the stock price is correcting. It's in a conflict. It doesn't know what to do. So therefore, when you rely on rules to tell you what to do, you give up the decision making and you let the rule tell you what to do. The rule doesn't have any opinions here. To, and therefore, it helps you making a very objective decision. When it comes to selling versus buying, selling is heavily underemphasized by the industry and there is a lot of under-search in selling. When it comes to buying, you know, you have you you can you have, you have everybody telling you online and a lot of research houses telling you which stock to buy, uh, when to buy it, etc. But when it comes to selling, you might have observed that it's underemphasized. There's not really much research out there to tell you when to sell a stock. So to get your selling right, you need to have good rules around technical analysis to help you telling you when to sell. Another very important note I'd like to mention here is that. The secret to winning in stocks is to lose very little when you're losing and to make it big when you're buying into stock. When you get a stock right, you need to get it right in a big way. But when you don't get it right, you need to keep your losses small and you need to get out. So remember that selling is very important if you want to make it, if you want to make a good portfolio returns in the stock market. <clears throat> Let's begin by looking at the 200 day moving average. The 200 day moving average, as the name implies, is the average of the last 200 days price of the stock. So that means that the 200 day moving average is going to tell you about the long term trend of the stock. You, you can observe here in the chart this red line here for Lupin Pharmaceuticals, by the way, which is one of the biggest winners for us, uh, is the 200 day moving average, the red line here. So during this run from 2011, to 2015, you can see that as the stock's making such kind of a run, very hardly, it, it never really breaches its 200 day moving average. 
So that is a very important observation. And our research has shown that when stocks are in for a secular run like this, very rarely they're likely to breach their 200 day moving average. So you can see that as long as the stock is holding its ground above the 200 day moving average, it is in this uptrend depicted by this line here. And as soon as the stock in 2003, in 2015 breaches its 200 day moving average is coming under pressure. And you can see that the character of the stock is changing somewhere here. And here it's coming under pressure and it's trending downwards. Therefore, you need to really be looking at whether the stock you're holding is above or below the 200 day moving average. Very, you shouldn't be looking at buying stocks below the 200 day moving averages as they're likely to come under pressure. You can see the stock is down 17% since it's breached its 200 day moving average in about 45 weeks. Let's look at another example Sun Pharmaceuticals. The same story here. When the stock is in the run, it is very unlikely that the stock is going to breach its 200 day moving average. The stock is bouncing off its 200 day moving average and it even gets some good support here. It tests its 200 day moving average, gets some good support and bounces back. Only until in 2015, when there is a huge gap down below the 200 day moving average, you can see this gap here, that's called a gap down. And you can, you should also observe that the gap down is on a huge volume. So this is a very bearish signal. It is, it is a sell signal. It is telling you that, you know, the stock is unlikely to continue doing this kind of a run, which we saw here, which we saw previously. And you need to be getting out of a stock when such kind of price action you see in the market. Now, what may happen and you might uh, ask a very natural question is that, you know, uh, you, you want them, you want the most out of your stocks. You, you need to make a note here that you may not be able to get the absolute bottom to the absolute top that is here. But what you're essentially doing is you're getting out of the stock when it, the probability of it coming under pressure is the highest. You can see the amount of resistance it's facing here. The stock is trying to recover its ground above its 200 day moving average and it's continuously being pushed back by its 200 day moving average. This is a very common trait what we have seen. So you need to know that 200 day moving average is crucial. Now in, 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 in the instance of Lupin Pharma what you saw previously and Sun Pharmaceuticals here, you're seeing the stock is coming under pressure when it breaches its 200 day moving average. Let me show you a few examples where things can get really worse when a stock breaks its 200 day moving average. Let's look at Just Dial. Just Dial was a very popular IPO and you can see the kind of run it generated post its listing. It tested its 200 day moving average in 2015, kind of breached it but managed to bounce back above it and again breached its 200 day moving average on huge volume once again in late in Q4 2014. You can see that if you're exiting a stock when you breach when it when it has a 200 DMA break, you are avoiding such kind of a drawdown in your stock. This is these are terrible losses you don't want to see. These are the losses which get to you. The stock is down almost 70% in 98 weeks. You can see it's really trying hard to get back above its 200 day moving average, but it's continuously facing resistance. It's being pushed lower and lower and lower. You don't want to be in the stock when it's when it's uh, trending below its 200 day moving average. That's a big no, no. Another example, idea cellular. The stock was testing its 200 day moving average and trading in and around it. But let's see what happens if you're holding a stock when it breaches its 200 day moving average. The stock is down 47% in 50. You're losing almost half your capital and the stock is again under resistance. As you can see, this was the fourth time it was breaching its 200 day moving average and even if you're entering the stock when it recovers above the 200 day moving average, you need to be getting back out of it when it's again breaking its 200 day moving average. The chances are that you're going to come out of a stock and you're going to avoid such kind of a drawdown. Like I said, the key to winning in stock market is to keep your losses as small as possible. You don't want to be seeing such kind of terrible losses on your stocks. Now, apart from the 200 day moving average, when a stock is making a run, there is a way where you can get an early signal as to what the stock is likely to do, whether it's coming under pressure or when is the right opportunity to sell much before the 200 day moving average. The clue lies in the 50 day moving average. Much before the 200 day moving average, if you see the 50 DMA break on huge volume, you should be really cautious. Let me illustrate it with a couple of examples. Vegar Industries, another big winner for us. You can see that during the run in the stock from 2013 to 2015, when it went up from the levels of 
around 400 to around 1000 the 200 the 50 day moving average here here being depicted by the black line here you can see that is the 50 day moving average you can see that the 50 day moving average contains most of the run in the stock you can see it finds support it finds support it finds support it finds support only until in 2015 then you can see it breaks this 50 dma on huge volume here and again finds some pressure and very and that's giving an early signal that you know you should probably be exiting the stock and you can see that much before the 200 dma breaks this could possibly give you an early clue let's look at another example tvs motors during its run in 2013 to 2015 the stock went up from 50 to 250 that's almost five times five times in under two years <coughs> again as i mentioned the 50 DMA represented by the black line here contains most of the run. It is very unlikely that when such kind of a run happens, it is going to breach its 50 day moving average and not find support. If it's not finding support like it did here in 2015, it broke its 50 DMA on heavy volumes and it didn't find support. And that's a sell signal for you much before the 200 day moving average. That's a little more earlier sell signal for you. That's giving you a clue that, you know, these are these this the, the character of the stock could possibly changing here and the stock could possibly coming under pressure here this is this that it could be signaling that this is the end of the run here so you need to watch for a 50 dma break on huge volumes and you need to watch if the stock is not finding support on under its 50 dma that's another early sell signal for you the crossovers now very often when you look at a technical chart and observe it you will find that there might be occasions when the 50 DMA and the 200 DMA interact with each other. They keep crossing over each other. Now, when you look, when you observe those crossovers, they can potentially tell you about a signal whether the stock is setting up or whether it's likely to deteriorate. Let's look at a few examples. Tata Motors. When the stock was in a nice uprun like this, you can see that the 50 DMA depicted by the black line here is quite distant from its 200 DMA which is depicted by the red line here. This is the case when the stock is going up until the stock is facing some pressure somewhere here and you can see that the 50 DMA and the, the 200 DMA are converging. And finally the 50 DMA breaks below 200 DMA. When this happens essentially what's happening is the short term trend of the stock that is the 50 DMA is trending below the long term trend of the stock implying huge pressure here. So this kind of a crossover is known as the death cross. This is a very bearish signal. You can see that once the death cross happens, the stock is coming under severe pressure. There's a huge correction here and it's 30% in 20 weeks. Implying that you need to be getting out of a stock. This could be giving you a signal and you need to be getting out of the stock when this death cross happens. Once the stock finds uh, some support and again forms a new cup with a handle here, you can see that the 50 DMA again is converging towards its 200 DMA here and there is something known as the golden cross which happens here. So this could be potentially giving you an early signal that things are changing for the stock. It is no more a bad stock. It could be setting up for a new run. So once this happens, you can say that the stock, you can see that the stock is forming a base here and on this breakout, possibly this is the, an ideal entry for the stock and you can again get back into the stock when it makes such kind of a new run. The stock was up 20% post this breakout. Now what we're saying here is that just because a golden cross happens, you need not be buying into the stock. What, 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 should, what you should ideally be doing is when a golden cross like this happens, you need to be highlighting the stock in your watch list. And once the stock forms a proper base after a golden cross and breaks out, that's when you should be getting into the stock. Let's look at another example. Yes Bank. You can see here, just before the stock makes this nice run here, there's a golden cross which happens. The 50 DMA breaks above its 200 DMA just before the run begins. There's a nice distance here between the 50 DMA and the 200 DMA. And as it converges here when the stock is coming under pressure, there is a death cross which happens. Once the death cross happens, the stock is under pressure. It's not really doing a run. It is stagnating. This is known as a consolidation. The stock is trading sideways. And again, as the price action improves in the stock, you can see that there is a new golden cross which happens here. 
the stock reclaims its ground above its 200 day moving average here that uh, we are not again saying that you should be entering that's that's an, that's not the entry point you need to wait the stock is forming a base you need to wait for it to break out that this is when that happens and the stock again makes a nice run after the breakout it's up 36% in 23 weeks so you need to be also looking at the crossovers that is the death crossover and the golden crossover to see if the stock is likely to be setting up for a nice run or whether it's likely to break down from there so let's summarize our learnings from today's webinar. Selling helps you in good risk management. Like I said earlier, the secret to winning in stock markets is to lose small when you're losing and to get it and when you get it right, you need to be getting it right in a big way. So to lose small when you're losing, you need to look at technical analysis and you need to be having rules around your sell signals. By using technical analysis, you can look at what the smart money is doing and you don't allow any room for emotions and biases to get into your investing. Therefore, technical analysis holds the key to selling. That's it for today's webinar. We hope today's webinar was useful to you. We hope your selling improves and your portfolio returns are much better once you incorporate such kind of rules into your selling. Thank you so much for watching the video. Feel free to download the Marketsmith India app available on Google Play Store. The Marketsmith India app has a lot of features including chart reading, 50 DMA, 200 DMA and many of the user features available for investors. Thank you so much again.